definitions, but usually theism is supposed to be deism plus. Yeah. Now, theism I think is ridiculous. The evidence to me seems so much against it. But I'm definitely open to, to deism. I find that incredibly interesting. Now, so if, if there is a creator, then of course the obvious question arises, well, what made the creator? But, okay, fine, but, but still, if there is a creator within the context of science and becomes investiga investigatable, that's interesting, right? And, it's, and it fits, it's plausible within the context of cosmism. Because you, know, you can speculate that these artefacts, in, in a highly advanced form, maybe just play with, not, not just investigating the laws of our universe, but their knowledge and intelligence is so great that they could maybe manipulate, they, they could become, become sort of Metaphysicists, you know, playing with the laws, changing the law. Maybe there are meta laws, higher level laws, that get used to make this particular universe or that particular one. Or who knows? So that would then make these artefacts gods, you know, creators. So it, so it fits. So so deism and cosmism fit. So so I can imagine the intellectuals in in the cosmist camp in the future. Bringing, bringing quasi religion and and modern science sort of together. See, I see see that happening. And I, I see this deistic motivation being very strong. The the, the cosmos will really use this. You know, you know create a sense of awe. You know, the, 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 the big picture. Do you think? And I think we I think we really no, tragic if we choose it. not to do that. You know, there's just so much more. Do you think it will be a powerful enough ideology to convert Christians, Islamists, and Jew, Judaists, and Buddhists? Yeah, that's, that's a tough one. I mean, I mean, there seems to be a lot of dogma in the world. Well, if what I... If do, you I think it'll take, if, do you think something like that will be enough, will be like the, the straw on the camel's back, which is breaks it, and, then, and people will then be willing to drop dogma? In favour of this, I mean, this this evidential wild appealing to their hu very human need to um, think of a bigger or a bigger life or a bigger creator out there, bigger this, and more intelligent. I mean, yeah, there's lo lots of issues here. In fact, in my second book, um, one of the one of the chapters, which is on the creation of a global state. One of the chapters was uh, playing devil's advocate with myself. So, so I'm pushing for the idea of the creation of a global state. So what, what, are the, what forces would act against that, you know, the conservative forces? And there are a lot of topics, like you know, ideological differences, religious differences, this, this kind of thing. And so how, how could you create a world where these differences would disappear? So on, on the religious front, I mean, if, if I look, for example, at Europe, Europe is far more secular, you know, non-religious, than America, for example. Huge, there's huge difference. Now, Europeans are now openly sneering at, at American religiosity. But even the Americans now, thanks to the internet, are organizing into, you know, atheistic groups and so forth, and, and strongly criticizing traditional religious beliefs. So... Uh, I wouldn't be at all surprised as, as the general educational level rises, then you'll see traditional religions dying away this, in the same way as, as ha has happened already in, in Europe, sort of a more sophisticated culture on the whole than, than America. As, as I said, you know, I've lived in both, and I'd say it's quite fair to say on the whole the European culture is a lot more sophisticated. America is a colony, right? It's largely middle, middle and lower class people on the whole. And it doesn't have the institutions, the sophistication level of, of, of Europe. The French particularly sneer at America. And I consider the French the most sophisticated people, culture in, in, in Europe. No, and I speak French, right? It's part of my, part of my culture. So I, I see religions just 
dying out effectively. They just they just can't compete with modern modern knowledge, modern cynicism, modern modern science. Right? So I see a kind of Europeanization of the planet. I mean, the Arabs are particularly today, in a sense. You know, why so much trouble from the Arabs? Well, I think because they're feeling profoundly threatened that their whole culture is being undermined by Western science. They're being scientized. Right? And, and it's, it's, it's killing them. It's killing, killing their culture. So I, I see that process running to completion. Uh, so we, we live in a secular culture. Uh, Mass, mass education, you know, with, with the Brad phenomenon, the internet speed doubling every year. So we'll be able to just with education, I call them EDSATs, education satellites. So with, with huge uh, bandwidths, they can broadcast thousands more of educational channels. So you can have the whole population of the earth well educated, you know, up to the, liberal, the level of abilities of individuals. So you, know, you can have primary, secondary, tertiary, full, ed, full uh, university education in, in all, virtually all topics. It's just, just a huge, huge bandwidth. And the, the, the future Brad will allow, right? It's just doubling every year. So you can educate the whole planet and that will make everyone rich, right? The poverty will disappear. Uh, everyone gets virtually secularized. I, I just see religions dying out for the, for the same reasons that they more or less died out in, in Europe. Uh, and America's just not there yet. But it's going, it's going along the same route. But Americans are sort of a special case because, well, I mean, they started off as a religious colony, right? So they've got all these religious genes and all these religious nutcases who came from Europe escape to America, you know, bringing, bringing their religiosity genes with them, so they're sort of filtered for. But even, even America is secularizing rapidly now, thanks largely to, to the internet. Uh, and I, I notice that in their movies, American movies. Right? You, you'll get statements now that just wouldn't have occurred to Americans to put into a movie just even 10 years ago. You're getting statements now saying, well, I know a lot of you don't believe in this stuff, but... That, that kind of thing. So, uh. so um, what's my other question? The resistance, where will it come from? I think you mentioned. Okay. So, so, if you ask me what, probably, probably what kind of people would, would these cosmos be? What, what categories of, of people? And again, that's a, that's a hard question. Would would they be the more religious kind? Maybe. I, I don't know. This this is tough. But I think we will know empirically. We we'll, we will know in five to ten years. I, I, you know, we'll, ju we'll just observe what what kind of people are ardent Terrans. And I wouldn't be surprised if if they are the traditional religious groups. Maybe maybe the definition of right wing may change and maybe it'll get redefined as basically Terran mm -hmm. who, you know, who, who knows uh, I see you, you know, once once the world moves closer and closer towards a global state and the issues of economic scarcity you know nanotech as all that stuff comes online and scarcity goes out the window pretty much then our our politics and economics will get redefined. Right? Once scarcity becomes a non-issue, when, 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 when we have the, you know, the, what's the word, the replicators, you know, the nanotech replicators, and they build anything you want. Like, like if you watch Star Trek, 24th century, you, you just talk to a machine and say, you know, I, want, I want you to build X, and it, it just builds it. It's just, it's just assembling, just putting the atoms in the right places to, to bond, to, to create any substance you want. So, I mean, there'd be some costs, the transportation costs of the raw material atoms into the machine, I suppose, right? But, but the price of the production of the thing would be virtually zero. So 
everyone could have anything they want. There'd be effectively almost no scarcity, except except perhaps space. You know, fill up all your space with junk, right? Stuff. So you'd need disassemblers, right? Okay, disassemble that. <laughs> Give me more space so I can put a new thing there or whatever. So you can imagine that. <laughs> So, mm. so, um, so you, you're not quite sure what the sort of where you see the Terrans sprouting from in, in ideological circles or the um, the cosmos here. Mm. What do you think it will take to know? Do you think it's one of those things which you'll be able to predict, or well, it does necessarily have to be observed over time? Well, it might be difficult. To, might, might be difficult to predict because you know it's still early well, days. Who, who were but, the, who were but, the but it could Luddites. be observed. Where did they come from? Well, the Luddites were people who were, in a sense, had their economies, their livelihoods destroyed by the machines. Mm. Yeah, when the, when the cottage industries were were destroyed, it is because the machines, the factories, were just so much more productive. Oh, you could, you could then specialize. You have you know, you know the uh, Adam Smith's famous description of the, the pin factory. Instead of having a few uh, artisans working at home making pins, they, they, they could make you know, I don't know, 10, 20, whatever pins per day using their traditional techniques. But then you get the, the factory system where you have people specializing, well this guy makes the head and this guy sharpens the point and this guy attaches the two together and this guy cuts them out and this guy whatever. The productivity, because the machine's doing so much of the work, the productivity just skyrockets, right? And therefore the price per unit goes right down. And of course, they're the ones that get sold. The market, the market chooses them because they're more productive. So, so the, the, home, the home market, the cottage industry type pin manufacturers or whatever, they go out of business, right? So they have, they have their livelihood destroyed. So, Will it be then that the market will choose the artifacts if we don't have um, abundance of meadows with football land? I mean, like, I mean, I think the, the whole economy will change if we get, like, uh, you know, give uh, nanotech creating everything well, for us. I think, I think what's different this time is we're no longer number one, right? which changes the whole ball game. Right? Yeah, but they've always been dumber than us in the past. Yeah, but this time they could not only take our jobs, they could take us. And so the fear factor is hugely greater. I think. And fear is a very powerful motivator. So, so I yeah, see the, yeah, the two basic emotions motivating the two camps. On, on, the, on the cosmic side, I, I see it as almost a kind of religious awe. Yeah, the, 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 the big picture. And on the, on the Terran side, fear, fear of extermination. So, so two hugely powerful motivators. And that's what's so depressing because you know, how do you match them off? You, you've got two fundamentally, diametrically opposed ideologies, both very powerful. So 